this crazy roller coaster involving dividing with decimals is just about pulling in to, to the end of the ride. Um, we've looked, we know about whole number division and we've looked at decimal numbers in the, in the divisor. We've looked at decimal numbers in the dividend and now we're putting that all together and saying, okay, what happens if you divide one decimal number by another decimal number? Well, the good news is nothing super brand new. We're going to start out thinking about it just like you would it, um, if you were just looking at a decimal divisor. So here we have seven hundredths as our divisor, and it's awkward. What can we do to, to uh, make it easier to find the quotient and, and not have to deal with the decimals? Multiply to, um, to, to, to create an equation that'll give us the same quotient but without all of that struggle. So if I have a number that is in the hundredths here, then I have to multiply that by 100 to, to take 7 hundredths and make it 7 whole. Now don't forget, you can't just magically change 7 hundredths to 7 whole. If we multiply the divisor by 100, we have to multiply the dividend by 100. If that's tough for you, you may want to refresh your mind with a little tutorial on multiplying with decimals. Um, what we find is what what that turns our, our uh, 4 and 2 tenths into 420. Now I can move forward as if this were any other division problem. I'm going to use expanded notation because that's what I like. Um, I can't take uh, any hundreds of groups of seven, but I can do some tens of groups of seven. In fact, it seems to me that if seven times six is 42, seven times 60 is going to get me 420. And there's our quotient. Now if I want to check to make sure Hey, does this, does this really work? I absolutely can take my quotient and I can multiply by my original divisor. And if this work is correct, then my product should be 4 and 2 tenths. Well, let's take a look. Nothing more to do here. I know I've got to move two places over to the right for my decimal because that's what my factors show. And what do we see? We see a mathematically proven equation. So let's take a look at this one more time. We'll give it another go. And again, decimal divisor, decimal dividend. I see I have 24 hundredths. If I want to change things so that I'm not dealing with a decimal in the divisor, since this goes to the hundredths, that means I have to multiply by 100 to turn 24 hundredths into 24 whole. If that's what I do to the divisor, I must, must, must do the same thing to the dividend. And however you choose to do that, whether you have a short cut or a long cut, totally up to you. We find that now uh, the dividend we're going to use um, to work with for our solution is 206 and 4 tenths. Um, it's okay to have that decimal in the dividend because we just we just move it up onto the quotient line because everything's lined up by place value. And from here, we can work the problem kind of any way we want. And I'll try using a shortcut or traditional or old school division for this one. I'm going to use 20 as my thinking number. Now that's not totally going to work because that would tell me that I can put a 1 here, but I can't because I cannot take 24 out of 20. So I'm going to have to think in terms of going to the, that, uh, that, this one's place and think to myself, well okay, if, if 20 is a little bit low as an estimate. Um, it looks like I should be able to multiply by 10. Well, I'm not going to be able to do that because 24 is a higher 
divisor, so I'll try multiplying by 9. Let's see what we get. Too high. So I'm going to bring it down 1. I'll try multiplying by 8. And I'm in great shape there, so I can see I can make 8 groups of 24. And that means that I can take 192 out of 206. And that leaves me with what I can think of as 144. Um, think, I think 7 might work here. The only way for me to know is to try No way. I was overestimating the situation. Aha. Definitely can do six groups of 24 for that. And so I end up with eight and six tenths, which is all well and good. Again, you can multiply to check and make sure that you feel confident in your answer to prove your work. Uh, I think we there's not a whole lot more with dividing decimals that we can do, except practice until it all makes sense to you. So, you know, do that. Maybe now.